Pour Tony Robinson, joie à épais vent de pair. J'avais cheminé aux côtés de cette infatigable activiste britannique à l'occasion de la première marche mondiale pour la paix et la non-violence en 2009-2010, un périple de 150 000 km à travers la planète au cours duquel nous avions traversé une trentaine de pays ensemble. Tony est un militant pour le changement social non-violent depuis ses études universitaires, en développant notamment le réseau du mouvement humaniste dans le monde entier. Il s'est spécialisé dans le désarmement nucléaire et les questions énergétiques. En 2013, il a été invité à devenir le co-directeur de l'agence de presse Presenza International, une agence spécialisée dans le journalisme de paix et de non-violence. Huit ans après cette inoubliable marche mondiale, je l'ai retrouvé à Budapest où il vit depuis six ans. Pour son action internationale en faveur de la paix et son engagement pour un journalisme de la conscience, il est devenu notre 37e nominé de la joie. There's so many fantastic things happening in the world. There's so many places where people are trying new forms of economics or they're, they're fighting for their human rights or they are, they are developing technology to help liberate human beings from conditions of, of suffering. And it doesn't get so much, so much uh, space in the, in the media. There's no space given to the fight against nuclear weapons. Well, Presenza uh, gives The, all of the positive news which the mainstream media uh, doesn't want to give. Joy is, a, is an experience which, which maybe we can, experience, we can feel every day, but the strongest ones have happened when, when I have a feeling that I connected very profoundly with something bigger than me. When I met the humanist movement, for instance, it was in, in Florence, in Italy, in, in 1989. And it was a congress of, of a political party called the Humanist Party that we were developing at that time. And there, I had an experience where I thought I was the only crazy idealist in the world. And I felt a little bit lonely. Uh, And I went to this congress and I found that there were thousands of people all around the world speaking different languages, you know, different races, different, different cultures, and that we all shared these strange, idealistic beliefs that it is possible to create a better world for everyone. That, for me, was an incredible moment of joy and it charged me with so much energy and motivation and inspiration that I am still to this day, 30 years later, still going in the same direction despite all of the difficulties and all of the cynicism and everyone around you who said, no, you have to be realistic. No, sod realism. I don't want to be realistic. I want to be idealistic because idealism enables us to change the future. Realism allows us to, to accept the shitty situation that we live in at the moment. When I was very young, as a teenager, I realized that uh, my privileged situation was due to a pure accident of birth. Yeah? I didn't choose to be born in the country that I was, with the gender that I am, with the skin color that I have. And I felt very, very quickly in life that I needed to dedicate my life to overcoming pain and suffering not just in, in, in other people, but also looking at the, the suffering that I have in my life and the violence that I experience inside of myself and to, to do something uh, about that kind of uh, internal violence. So if we want to have joy for the planet, yeah, we need that everyone has that feeling of an open future, that everyone feels that they have lots of choices uh, in front of them. To, to work according to their vocation, to develop themselves, to become an artist, to become you know, a, a writer, whatever it is they want to do, whether, whatever, whatever they feel that their, their, their contribution they can make to society is, we want every human being to feel that they have that possibility. To 
to rebuild trust between politicians and, and civil society, I, I actually think what we need is a, is a revolution and we need to have a change of consciousness. And that consciousness needs to put the value of human life as a central value. It needs to treat other people the way we want to be treated. And it needs to, to, to say we need to wake up and we need to do something. Thank you and thank you to all the people who, uh, who are following your, your website and your blog and making donations because I know that, uh, that this project is not just your project but it's the project of, uh, uh, of many people who want to see a better world and a world full of joy. So thank you to you and all of those people.